The ground beneath Kamchatka is anything but still. On July 30, 2025, one of the strongest earthquakes of the century, measuring a colossal magnitude 8.8, .8, tore through the subduction zone just off Russia's remote Pacific coast. The violent rupture sent shockwaves across the planet, triggered tsunami warnings from Japan to Hawaii, and within days coincided with the astonishing eruption of a volcano that had been silent for nearly 600 years. For a moment, the world's attention turned toward this volcanic frontier, a place where Earth's restless forces converge. But the story did not end there. As the weeks passed, several aftershocks have continued to rattle the region, some strong enough to be felt hundreds of kilometers away. Seismologists began asking a chilling question. Was this massive rupture the end of a seismic cycle, or merely the beginning of something even larger? Could Kamchatka be on the brink of another megaquake? Let's find out as we delve into the science, history, and hazards surrounding Kamchatka's ongoing earthquake crisis. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. The Kuril-Kamchatka subduction zone is one of the most formidable tectonic boundaries on Earth. Stretching more than 2,100 kilometers from northern Japan to the Bering Sea, it marks the place where the dense Pacific Plate relentlessly plunges beneath the Okhotsk Microplate, itself considered part of the North American Plate System. Convergence rates here are among the fastest in the world, close to 79 millimeters per year, ensuring a constant buildup of stress along the megathrust interface. This process drives a dramatic geological landscape, a deep oceanic trench, a rugged forearc, and a volcanic arc bristling with some of the planet's most active stratovolcanoes. The subduction mechanics create ideal conditions for megathrust earthquakes. As the Pacific Plate sinks, sediments and water are dragged into the mantle, generating fluids that weaken the overlying crust and feed chains of explosive volcanoes like Kluchevskoy and Bezimiany. At the same time, the locked interface between the plates accumulates enormous elastic strain. When it ruptures, the result can be seismic events exceeding magnitude 8 or 9, often paired with devastating tsunamis. The Kuril-Kamchatka zone's combination of rapid plate motion, thick trench sediments, and a long, continuous fault makes it one of Earth's greatest natural disaster engines. On July 30th, a magnitude 8.8 .8 rupture broke a long section of the plate interface in the east. The quake's mechanism was shallow reverse faulting on the subduction thrust, consistent with other great events along this margin. The shaking damaged infrastructure in parts of Kamchatka and Sakhalin, and launched a Pacific-wide tsunami warning cascade. Early analyses highlight that the magnitude 8.8 .8 event was preceded nine days earlier by a nearby magnitude 7.44 shock, an unusual but telling clue that stress on the megathrust had been building toward a very large failure. Within 48 hours, more than 100 magnitude 5-plus aftershocks outlined a rupture swath hundreds of kilometers long. Normally, a magnitude 8.8 .8 megathrust earthquake is expected to generate a catastrophic Pacific-wide tsunami, similar to the 2004 Sumatra Andaman, or 2011 Tohoku events. Yet in Kamchatka, while the tsunami was damaging locally, it did not unleash devastating basin-wide waves. Scientists are still investigating why a quake this large did not generate a more catastrophic tsunami. According to leading experts, while the quake released enormous seismic energy, the geometry and mechanics of the rupture weren't optimal for tsunami generation. Despite the lack of a catastrophic tsunami, days after the main shock, the Krasheninikov volcano produced its first recorded eruption in roughly five to six centuries, lofting ash to around seven to nine kilometers altitude and prompting authorities to flag aviation hazards. Krasheninikov's awakening may reflect dynamic stress perturbations from the quake acting on a system already primed with magma. Elsewhere in the arc, Klyuchevskoy, the region's most active stratovolcano, showed heightened activity. The timing of these events underscores Kamchatka's hallmark, a tight coupling between a fast subduction engine and a prolific volcanic belt. 
Since the megathrust earthquake, Kamchatka has been shaken by a relentless sequence of aftershocks that continues to unsettle both scientists and residents. Within the first 48 hours alone, seismographs recorded over 100 tremors exceeding magnitude 5.0, including several in the magnitude 6.0 to 6.9 range. In total, more than 1,400 aftershocks of magnitude 4 or greater were documented. Far from letting up, seismic activity has remained persistent. On August 27, a strong magnitude 6.0 aftershock struck just east of Severokorilsk at a depth of 53 kilometers, lightly felt by around 5,000 people, though thankfully triggering no tsunami alerts. Smaller quakes continue too. A magnitude 4.7 tremor was reported on August 24th. Aftershocks are an expected part of the story. They occur because the Earth's crust does not instantly settle after a rupture of this scale. Instead, stress redistributes across surrounding fault patches, gradually finding new points of weakness. The frequency of aftershocks decays over time, but powerful quakes can continue for months or even years after a great event. The largest aftershocks are typically more than one magnitude unit smaller than the main shock, meaning scientists anticipate shocks in the high 6 range, but not another 8.8 .8 within the same rupture zone. For Kamchatka's people, however, even moderate aftershocks are alarming. Each tremor carries the risk of landslides, infrastructure damage, or renewed tsunami warnings. The aftershocks serve as both a natural reminder of the immense energy unleashed in July and a warning that the crust remains restless. Despite the colossal magnitude 8.8 .8 rupture on July 30th, the question now haunting scientists and citizens alike is whether Kamchatka's seismic slumber has merely paused or if another megaquake lurks just over the horizon. In the short term, the most probable hazard remains damaging aftershocks. According to the USGS, there's now less than a 1% chance of another magnitude 8-plus event in the same rupture zone in the near future, but a roughly 5% chance for magnitude 7-plus shocks, and nearly a 47% probability of magnitude 6-plus tremors within that span. Strength will diminish over time, but the threat remains non-trivial for months. In the intermediate term, geological research paints a nuanced picture. A recent study of ring-shaped seismicity patterns, a subtle swelling of weaker quakes forming elliptical arches, suggests that these structures can signal preparation zones for future ruptures. In southern Kamchatka, three such rings were identified even before the 2025 event. Historically, Similar patterns have preceded great earthquakes with delays of 10 to 15 years. The study predicts a potential magnitude 8.4 to 8.8 .8 quake could still materialize between 2026 and 2031. Looking further ahead, the long-term outlook is essentially certain. Kamchatka will rupture again. The region's fast convergence rate guarantees the reaccumulation of strain along its vast, locked megathrust. Whether this next breaking event will rupture the same patch or leap to a neighboring segment remains unclear. But history reminds us it will happen. In sum, while another megaquake is unlikely in the immediate weeks, it cannot be ruled out in the coming years. Continuous monitoring and preparedness remain critical. The Earth here moves too fast to be ignored. The science is clear on one crucial point we cannot predict the timing of a specific large earthquake with precision. What we can do is quantify probabilities and prepare accordingly. The USGS aftershock framework provides situational awareness, how many aftershocks to expect, and the odds of damaging ones, while international tsunami centers now integrate real-time seafloor and satellite data to refine alerts. Kamchatka's July 2025 experience shows both the power of those systems and their limits. Evacuation orders and caution saved lives, yet local damage near the source was unavoidable. For coastal communities bordering subduction zones, the evergreen actions are the same. Know your elevation, your fastest route to high ground, how to respond to strong shaking without waiting for a siren, and how to navigate the first chaotic hours after the water withdraws. The July Kamchatka earthquake was enormous, 
but it did not rupture the entire subduction zone. Great earthquakes rarely do. Instead, they often leave behind seismic gaps. Sections of the fault that remain locked, silent, and ominously loaded with strain. These seismic gaps are critical to the region's long-term hazard because history shows that unbroken patches can fail in subsequent events, sometimes within years of a nearby rupture. In Kamchatka, scientists are carefully mapping which segments slipped in July and which stayed quiet. Early analyses suggest that parts of the southern Kuril Arc and northern Kamchatka may not have released their accumulated stress. If these locked zones are large enough, they could host future earthquakes in the magnitude 8 to 9 range. The key question is not if these gaps will break, but when. They may rupture in cascading sequences, triggered by stress transfer from the 2025 event, or they may bide their time for decades until strain reaches a breaking point.